Hey guys, before we kick off the video, I just want to say that this video is in no way intentionally trying to be malicious towards Optimus Code. I know him a little bit on Twitter, I even follow him, but I'm not too familiar with him personally at all, honestly. This in no way is malicious towards him, it's just constructive criticism on what he was saying. And he may not know me, but if he's watching this, I just want to say, welcome to the Cult Classic Cage Show. I am the host, you can call me Cassie Cage. But overall, I just want to say, put this out there, that I really have no personal opinion on if you actually do know these PlayStation Insiders or not. I'm not going to judge you on that. I don't know you enough to make a judgment on that. So I withhold my judgment based on that. But there's definitely something wrong with your video. Something just feels off. So this video is constructively criticizing what I feel is off about the things that you're seeing. So. With all that being said, let's get into it. Now, Sony just a couple of days ago announced that Death Stranding Director's Cut and Sackboy's Big Adventure would be getting a trial. And this trial is being distributed specifically through email to PlayStation users. Now, I myself have not received a invitation to play the trial of Death Stranding Director's Cut or Sackboy's Big Adventure. And I have not played either of these games. However, I do know quite a bit about them. Now, Optimus Code claims to have insider knowledge to Sony and says that Sony is test running this trial option in order to potentially expand upon it and make it normalized for all PS5 games in the PlayStation Store. He very specifically says that this isn't something being offered by the developers, but by Sony themselves as a feature in the PlayStation Store. Now, don't go and take my word for it. This is his words exactly. Because the de developers reached out to me and let me tell y'all the secret inside information. Late Friday, uh, developers reached out to me and they gave me a few details about this game trial system. And the main detail that I think is relevant for Pegasus Nation is that Sony is doing these game trials of these two games. They are looking at the data and they are paying attention to how popular this is and the reason why, just a little inside information for you, what Sony actually wants to do is add a feature to the PlayStation Store so that any game that is in the PlayStation Store, you automatically have access to that game in limited capacity. Sounds too good to be true, right? That's because it is. There's no way Sony's going to do this. Not for every PS5 game. No way. And there is no way the developers themselves would openly consent to doing this. Imagine the insane backlash that Sony would get from all of the developers pretty much in the industry that they essentially are telling the developers who make these games that they have to offer a trial of their game. I mean, from a consumer standpoint, it's amazing. I would essentially not get bluffed almost every time with every new overhyped game anymore. I mean, it sounds great. I would love for this to happen because it would benefit me directly. But will that actually happen in an industry that constantly relies on overhyping, overstating, and overplaying their so-called uh, game that's going to change society and the world as we know it? Come on, man, let's be real. So what that means is every PS5 game listed in the PlayStation Store, you have access to this game for some set hours that you don't even have to pay for. And you can access the game, try it out, see if you like it. And if you do like it, obviously you can go ahead and buy it. And if you don't like it, then you have saved yourself some money. And now I have to ask the question, why would Sony be so generous? A company that still doesn't allow us to return broken games. They only open that up specifically for Cyberpunk because it caused such a big uproar within the community. And a big reason as to why it did cause an uproar in the community is because of how strict Sony had become over the years with returning games that were broken as shit. They got an extreme influx of refund requests that were obviously denied. And yeah, they had to change some things up. But they didn't do it in the long-term basis. They specifically did it just for Cyberpunk 2077. 
Now, I'm in no way blaming Sony for Cyberpunk 2077 because that was all CD Projekt Red botching that entire situation. But I think Cyberpunk 2077 made it very apparent that there's more than just one issue going on in this gaming industry. But here's another example coming directly from Sony's own policy in which I really think that Optimus Code's uh, insider information that he's you know, so generously disclosing to us is uh, a little far-fetched. Now, Sony introduced the capture feature back when the PS4 launched, and it's a great feature. I mean, they advertise this feature as, as a big reason to buy their console, and I, I love it. I use it to this very day. It's very good. Not only can you take screenshots, but you can also record video, and you can also stream gameplay onto Twitch or YouTube which is really good. However, the negative side of this feature is that Sony leaves it up to the developer on whether we can use this feature or not, and how much we could use this feature, and when we could use this feature. Now, a feature that Sony used to get the consumer to want to purchase their systems is a feature that could be turned on or off and controlled by the developers themselves. Sounds a little strange, don't you think? People don't really bring up this thing, but honestly, I see this as a big consumer issue, and not enough people talk about it. My friend was streaming Final Fantasy VII Remake, and he was using the streaming feature that is offered on the PlayStation, and guess what? When he got towards the end game, the game told him that, well, you can't stream this part of the game because Square Enix said so. So you are telling me this same Sony is going to suddenly mandate a mandatory trial for every single PS5 game put on the store? I oh, don't know, man. I'm just going to leave that one up to the people that watch the video. Now, one thing we certainly can agree on is that Sony is testing something for sure. They wouldn't be doing this otherwise. Let's think about why they specifically chose Death Stranding, Director's Cut, and Sackboy's Big Adventure. Now, these are both two relatively well-known games. However, they don't really sell as much as Ghost of Tsushima, or The Last of Us, or Marvel Spider-Man, for example. Now, Death Stranding sold like 5 million or so units, I believe, and I don't think we know how much Sackboy Big Adventure sold, so judging by that, probably not the most impressive numbers by any means. And a big reason why these games aren't quite as popular specifically is because, well, they're niche titles. Sackboy Big Adventure is a kid's game, whereas Death Stranding is more so a walking simulator Amazon delivery service game. So definitely not something the mass audience would love and enjoy. However, I think Sony thinks that these games could sell even more than what they did. And a big reason for that is because, well, these games are pretty good in their own right. From what I've heard, they play really well. And uh, they are good lookers for the particular looks that they're going for. So, plain and simple, I think the reason that Sony is doing trials of these games and testing the idea of trials out is because... They think that these games could sell a lot more than they actually did with a little push. And I think that Sony's testing this feature out to see how it will translate to sales. Now, the only way this trial feature will succeed is if it translates to the people that were invited to do the trial actually buying the games themselves. Now, I really don't think Sony's going to force this feature on all developers. No way. In fact... They probably won't even use this feature on their most popular games out there. Face it guys, we're not going to see a trial of God of War Ragnarok the day it releases. I know it's depressing, but it's just the plain truth. I'm sorry that I have to break that news to you all. I mean, just look at the insane precedent that this sets and how it would be used by regular people even. First off, this feature would end pre-orders entirely. Everyone would just wait to the day of the release to trial the game and see if they like it or not. Now, as we know, the industry is so dependent on baiting people into pre-ordering a game 
then we have to think about the people that are obsessed with the honeymoon phase. I mean, sometimes I buy new games because I just want the feeling of playing a brand new game. And then after like playing the game for like two days, I drop it. There would definitely be people that would be completely satisfied with just playing a PS5 trial of the game and moving on to the next one and the next one and the next one and just basically make their entire gaming career on that alone. Then you have those people that would probably exploit that for trophies. They'd probably have a shit ton more bronze trophies for playing the trial of these games and they could basically feel really good about themselves for bolstering their, uh, their, their bronze trophy list just on these PlayStation trials alone. I want to be clear on this. I think the only thing that PlayStation is simply doing is just trying to bolster the sales of games I think that they think could do a lot better. And the reason why I think that is specifically because Nintendo does the same thing. Nintendo takes the games that are not as popular as Zelda Breath of the Wild or even Mario Odyssey and does game trials of these games specifically if you are a subscriber to the Nintendo Switch Online service. Some of the games that Nintendo has trialed are, for example, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker, Damon X Machina, Fire Emblem Warriors, Mario Tennis Aces, Pokin, Story of Seasons, and even Ease 8. All relatively seen as respectable games, however, they do not sell nearly as much as Nintendo's top sellers did. So yeah, I think for the most part, Sony is going to handpick a very select few games to do these trials with, and it'll probably happen every couple of months or so, give or take. But that's just my personal thoughts on this. Optimus Code, I think you yourself even know that this potential of trials for all PS5 games is really far-fetched, but... Let's listen to the reason why I think you're making this video in the first place. And this whole thing that they call buyer's remorse, uh, which as many of you know, this is one of the reasons that a lot of the Xbox fans use to justify Game Pass. I understand that everybody have different budgets, but that whole line of thinking is like, like buying a game and trying to decide what game you wanna buy is just so fraught with peril and danger that you just like on the edge of your seat, just just shaking and trembling, scared to buy a game because you don't know if you're gonna like it, and and you just never know what you're gonna do, and you was just just shaking with fear and didn't know how you was gonna end up buying the game, and you just just sitting there looking and didn't know what to do, couldn't go left, couldn't go right, couldn't go up, couldn't go down just sitting there just frozen scared to buy a game and then all of a sudden oh game pass to the rescue and now i'm no longer afraid that i have to 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 spend money on a game and i can just just play whatever i want and, and now i just i life is so much better now because buyer's remorse has been taken out of the equation the fanboy wars everybody the battle continues to rage forward between the sony ponies and the Xbox. Now let's be real now, Sony doesn't give a shit about buyer's remorse. At the end of the day, they made profit off of any game that is sold on the PlayStation Store, period. So, the more buyer's remorse that people are suckered into, the better for them overall. You do bring up one very important point when it comes to your opponents, the Xbox. They do not buy games in hopes that they come to Games Pass. And Sony knows this too, which is why they wouldn't offer a trial of every single PS5 game in their store. So in discussing your own mortal enemies and what they tend to do, the Xbox, you essentially disprove your own so-called insider information. And at the end of the day, just to cap everything off, Sony will not be subsidizing these developers in any way for allowing them to trial every single PlayStation 5 game on their store. So yeah, Optimus Code, I think you honestly got some bad information from someone that's probably misleading you. You might want to cut them off. But yeah, guys, that's all I got here today. If you can, like the video, share the video. Let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about this topic in particular. And subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to keep up the conversation, you could follow me over at Cult Classic Cage on Twitter. 
with all that being said guys i'm out peace